So Bill O'Reilly did a talking points memo yesterday on the issue of white privilege, and perhaps not surprisingly, he doesn't believe in it. But the argument he uses is fascinating. He's going to bring up Asians. So let's listen, and then I want to come back and explain why virtually every point he makes is totally misleading. The truth about white privilege, that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points Memo. Last night on The Factor, Megyn Kelly and I debated the concept of white privilege, whereby some believe that if you are Caucasian, you have inherited advantages in America. Talking Points does not, does not believe in white privilege. However, there is no question that African Americans have a much harder time succeeding in our society than whites do. But the primary reason is not skin color. It's education, and not only book learning. Here are the facts. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the unemployment rate for black Americans is 11.4%. It's just over 5% for whites, 4.5% for Asians. So, do we have Asian privilege in America? Because the truth is that Asian American households earn far more money than anyone else. The median income for Asians, close to $69,000 a year. It's $57,000 for whites, $33,000 for blacks. So the question becomes, why? And the answer is found in stable homes and an emphasis on education. 88% of Asian Americans graduate from high school, compared to 86% for whites and just 69% for blacks. That means... 31% of African Americans have little chance to succeed in the free marketplace because they're uneducated. They're high school dropouts. Asian Americans also tend to keep their families intact. Just 13% of Asian children live in single parent homes, compared to a whopping 55% for blacks and 21% for whites. So there you go. There you go. So, in other words, black people aren't doing well because it's all their fault. There's no nuance, there's no complexity, there's no sociological or systemic reasons. Look in the mirror, blame yourselves, black people, 100% it's on you. You're just lazy, uneducated, high school dropouts with broken families, and it's just how it is, man. It just is what it is. See, the problem with uh, O'Reilly's premise is that it, it always simply boils down to blacks are inferior, right? And then the more you push him, inevitably he has to admit it because it's what's underlying all of his arguments. It would have to be, well, biologically, genetically. It's, it's inherent in the color of their skin that they just can't do as well. They're just, not, they're just not made out for it. It's just not in their DNA. It's just not planned out for them. They're just inferior. Now, that is absurd because it's a simpleton's response and reaction to the reality of the world. And let's call it what it is. It is racist. Bill O'Reilly, everybody knows Bill O'Reilly's a racist. He always depends on skewed statistics with no explanation behind them. And it points to them and says, well, see, 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 black people uh, do more crime and they drop out of school and they do this and they do that. So end of story, it makes perfect sense for white people to hate black people and be scared of them and to not hire them and to keep them down. Now, what key fact is O'Reilly admitted omitting here, which changes everything about his argument. Let me read you a portion of an article from the Global Post. Quote, According to the 2012 Annual Report of Chinese International Migration published this Monday, China is undergoing a mass migration of its citizens overseas, with the United States being far and away the top destination. Canada and Australia were second and third. In 2011 alone, nearly 90,000 Chinese were granted U.S. permanent residency. Now, here's the most important line. Quote, Affluent and educated elites are the main force in emigration. So do you get that? What they're saying is, Asian immigrants who do well are already coming from rich elite families, so they have the material well-being and connections to do incredibly well financially. But he doesn't mention that. 
money begets money. If you have money and connections, you're going to do better than somebody who doesn't. And the people he's referring to have it, but he doesn't mention that. He makes it seem like Asian Americans, Black Americans all started the same line. Somebody fucking shot a gun in the air and said, go, and then boom, Asians just destroyed Blacks because what do you expect? The Blacks are inferior and the Asians worked harder and they don't have broken families, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Again, it's a simpleton's way of viewing the world. And then also, let me dig a little deeper here and get more specific. So, another thing O'Reilly doesn't mention, and I read a great article about this earlier, is when you say Asian Americans, that's way too broad. That's way too broad. There's so many different kinds of Asians. So, if we're talking about Chinese immigrants, if we're talking about uh, Taiwanese immigrants, if we're talking about uh, South Korean immigrants, those immigrants are usually uh, very high-skilled and they're already coming from fairly affluent families and the U.S. basically picked them out when it came to immigration and said, we want the best of the best and you're coming here, right? Now, compare that to Vietnamese immigrants, Cambodian immigrants, immigrants from Laos. Uh, in those cases, they're, they were poor and they were political refugees, and they came here. So, what happens as a result of this? The statistics show, if you come from Vietnam or Cambodia or Laos, if you're of that descent and you're in the United States of America, those groups are doing way worse than African Americans. Okay? Whereas if you look at uh, Chinese immigrants or, or Taiwanese immigrants or uh, other Asians, right, then they're doing better because they came from money. So, he's got such a fucking simpleton's view of the world, man. And I said this earlier on Twitter, I'm going to repeat it right now because I think it's the sad reality. Unfortunately, I think that a rant like that, that O'Reilly did, it's going to convince a, a lot of white people. And I honestly, I think not just conservative white people, I think even some moderate white people, you might call them, maybe some somewhat, uh, you know, center-left uh, white people. I think a rant like that, gives ammunition to people where they just go, well, I guess it does just come down to hard work and the family not staying together and education, and it's all the culture. It's the most convenient argument white people have ever made, and they believe it to their core that, oh, yes, it is, it's just the culture. You know, d don't blame us, don't blame systemic racism, don't blame history for the situation black people are in. It's them. It's all on them at this point. A lot of white people believe it, man, and it's very, very sad. And, um, uh, let me also mention this. He's actually proving a progressive point without realizing it, right? Because if he were to give you the reality and say, well, the Asians already come from money, so they get an equal opportunity and they do well, then he would realize, oh, right, the progressives are right. Because that's the argument we make. If you give people an opportunity, if you give them a chance, if you give them enough of a material well-being and support, right, if you give them a safety net which works and is strong, well, then they'll make it. So he doesn't, O'Reilly doesn't even realize it, but he's basically admitting that, well, I guess the Democrats are right, because these are people who, particular Asian Americans were already affluent and they came here and they did well. So I guess if you just give people a chance, then they'll end up doing well. And the final thing is, what is white privilege? He's like, we don't, we don't believe in white pr privilege on the factor. I've never heard a sillier thing in my life. It doesn't matter if you believe in it or don't believe in it. It's a reality. So, what is white privilege? Well, white privilege is Bristol Palin getting knocked up in her teens and Republicans still calling her and her boyfriend an all-American family. Remember, uh, Levi Johnston, the guy who knocked up Bristol Palin, he got on his Facebook page, I'm a fucking redneck, all I want to do is drink beer and do this and do that. And it, what did the Republicans say? Oh, all-American family. That's what they are. White privilege is looking at them and saying that, when at the same time, can you imagine if that was Obama's daughter? If that was Obama's daughter, in her teens, pregnant, and uh, there's a dude who says, I live a thug life and I'm a gangsta on his Facebook page, or his MySpace page, whatever. MySpace doesn't do shit anymore. But, uh, what would the Republicans say? What would America say? Oh my god. Thug, gangster, backwards culture, it's just how they are. If it's white people, Oh, all-American family, whatever. Oh, they have problems, it's their own business, right? If it's a black family, well, uh, gangster thugs, that's how they are, it's in the culture, they're bad people. That's what white privilege is. And by the way, all these examples I'm giving, it's not from me, it's from a guy named Tim Wise, who's an anti-racist uh, activist, and he wrote a great article about this years ago. White privilege is Sarah Palin going to four or five different colleges, failing out of at least one of them, but doing poorly in many of them, and nobody questions her academic record. 
Whereas Obama has a flawless academic record, and he's still questioned as, oh, well, he just made it because of affirmative action. That's white privilege. White privilege is loving guns and being considered an all-American constitutionalist who loves uh, America when you're holding your guns and taking pictures with them and advocating for them, as opposed to a black person loves uh, loving guns. Well, that person's just a thug. That's white privilege. White privilege is when you commit a crime, like a mass shooting, which, by the way, is overwhelmingly done by white men. Nobody links it to your culture. They say, oh, it's a crazy person. Oh, he was out of his mind. He had problems. You're just a crazy individual. But if you're black and you commit a crime, it's part of a culture. It's not just the one person who did it. It's all black people who are to blame because of the rap music and because of this and because of that. And it's a societal problem or a cultural problem. And it's that specific culture. And finally... White privilege is what we've seen in the studies, which has proven white privilege, which is the eBay study where if you try to sell an iPod online, one hand is black, one hand is white, all the other information exactly the same, the white hand gets over 50% more hits. There's no other factor other than uh, the color of the skin, and that's way above the margin of error. So, in other words... It's not just an accident. People are purposely choosing the white hand because they think that, oh, well, I'm the black guy, ooh, i got to stay away from him. Uh, white privilege is the resume study, where if you have a traditionally white name on a resume versus a traditionally black name, the white name gets virtually all the hits, black name gets almost none. Uh, white privilege is when that new YouTube video that was released where uh, a guy and his friend decided, well, you know what we'll do? Let's uh, break into a car with one of those things to get your keys out like they're stuck in the car. When the white guy did it, a cop drove by, nobody cared. People were just walking on the sidewalk minding their business. It was nothing. People, I guess, assumed he's just getting his keys out of the car. When the black guy did the exact same thing, within five minutes, a cop showed up, had him against the wall, handcuffed him, was rough with him. People called the cops immediately. There was also an ABC News uh, bicycle study where a, uh, a white girl tried to unchain a bike and was having trouble. People went up and helped her and tried to flirt with her, right? A white guy did it. People just ignored him, didn't do anything. When a black guy did it, immediately called the cops. People immediately thought they were he was stealing it. It's the perception. The difference is the perception, man. Uh, black people and white people use drugs at the same rate. Black people are four times more likely to get arrested for it. This is white privilege. To deny it is to deny reality, and that's exactly what Bill O'Reilly's doing.